no one should be surprised by the idea that science sometimes gets it wrong. Or rather, scientists get it wrong. It is implicit in their way of working to make a hypothesis and try to prove it, thus turning it into a way of explaining reality that is valid until a better way comes along and manages to prove itself too. The hard part is when they have to assure themselves that what they are saying is correct. Do you want to know about the scientists who have been wrong? I tell you about it in this top 7. Hi Ed Lovers, Jay here and welcome to Ed Pop, your go-to channel for the best science facts and curiosities you can't find anywhere else. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. Top 7 it is. Number 7. The Triple Helix of DNA, according to Linus Pauling. Let's travel back in time to 1953. In that year, two intrepid scientists, Francis Crick and James D. Watson, were about to make a discovery that would shake the foundations of biology, the structure of DNA. Imagine their excitement when they found the famous double helix, a true genetic treasure. Then there was Linus Pauling, a renowned chemist who already had two Nobel Prizes on his shelf. What a resume! Pauling, a true ace in his field, wanted to see the photographs of the DNA fibers that Crick and Watson used in their research. But he was always told no. Despite not having the essential pictures, Pauling decided to take the plunge and present his own model in a paper entitled, A Proposed Structure for Nucleic Acids. Unfortunately, his model was more flawed than a sieve. Instead of two coiled strands, as scientists now know, Pauling claimed there were three. Wow, looks like he was off by a hair. What we do know is that they got together when they realized that launching such an object would have been a total failure. Good for them. Number 6. Miles and Miles, according to NASA. September 1999, and enter the Mars Climate Orbiter Odyssey. In a universe full of brilliant minds, two teams of scientists came together to undertake an epic mission, to explore Mars. On the one hand, there was Lockheed Martin Aeronautics, experts in building Hollywood-style spacecraft. On the other hand, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory is the genius behind space navigation. The company, Lockheed Martin Astronautics, was in charge of designing and building the spacecraft. Maybe they got too excited because, in designing the Mars Climate Orbiter, they decided to use the Anglo-Saxon metric system. Yes, those famous miles that Americans love. They didn't want to be left behind in space fashion, of course. On the other hand, we had the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, a group of brilliant scientists who knew the international system of units like the back of their hands. But here comes the problem. The cosmic problem that led to one of NASA's biggest blunders is that it turns out that these two brilliant teams were not on the same wavelength, literally. The spacecraft was designed to operate in miles, while the navigation systems were programmed in kilometers. Something was bound to go wrong. The Mars Climate Orbiter, completely oblivious to this madness, launched into space in search of Martian adventure. It approached Mars, but something was wrong. The navigation system, confused between miles and kilometers, went haywire, and the spacecraft's trajectory went completely off course. Oh no, this could not end well. And so, instead of landing softly on Mars as planned, the Mars Climate Orbiter decided to make an abrupt and unplanned rendezvous with the surface of the red planet. Boom! NASA was left open-mouthed, dumbfounded, and utterly perplexed. Of course, this is not exactly what NASA had in mind. But hey, sometimes the most disastrous failure can be the catalyst for great progress and future improvements. Number 5. The Earth is Very Young, According to Lord Kelvin Earth, this magnificent planet we live on, has been the subject of countless studies over the centuries. But did you know that scientists of the past made some minor mistakes when trying to determine its age? That's right. Known in academic circles as Sir William Thompson, this bold scientist went down in history as Lord Kelvin, and boy did he leave his mark on the world of science. Kelvin also wanted to discover the age of our beloved home, the Earth. He decided that temperature would be his ally in this mission. For what could be more intriguing than measuring the Earth's heat to calculate its age? A bold and daring idea. Kelvin suggested that our planet began as a giant, fiery ball of liquid that gradually cooled over time. What a sizzling image! And so, determined to solve the mystery, he embarked on a frenzied race to determine how long it would have taken the Earth to reach its present temperature. 
After exhaustive research, he concluded that the Earth was between 20 and 400 million years old. Pretty wide range if you ask me. But here's the unexpected twist. It turns out that Kelvin was just a little off in his estimate. How could that happen? Well, it turns out that the data Kelvin was relying on was incomplete, leading to erroneous conclusions. Fortunately, thanks to subsequent advances in geology and physics, we eventually discovered that the Earth is about 4.5 billion years old. What a leap in time! Number 4. Nuclear Winter, according to Carl Sagan Carl Sagan was so talented in his field that people considered him a hero of science. But even heroes can screw up from time to time. Carl and a group of scientists decided to publish a very interesting article in the prestigious journal Science. The title was rather shocking. Nuclear Winter – The Global Consequences of Multiple Nuclear Explosions Sounds scary, doesn't it? Well, it was. In this article, Carl Sagan and his colleagues warned that if a nuclear war ever occurred, a thick cloud of dust would cover the atmosphere, blocking out sunlight and causing a climate change as drastic as the one that wiped out the dinosaurs. What a drama! But climate scientists around the world were skeptical. In 1990, he and the other authors of the original paper decided to correct their mistake and published a correction. They admitted that they had made some mistakes in their calculations. Oops, again! And they noted that, in fact, an all-out nuclear war could only lower temperatures in cold climates by a modest average of 2 degrees. No big deal. Can you imagine what the world would be like if a nuclear winter really happened? Number 3. Heredity According to Charles Darwin Once upon a time, a genius named Charles Darwin changed the world with his revolutionary theory of natural selection. However, his view of genetic inheritance presented a small problem that challenged his own theory. Imagine one black cat among a million white cats. The belief at the time was that inheritance was like mixing paint. The black would be diluted and we'd get a bunch of gray cats. We wouldn't have any black cats. What a mess. But wait, here comes our hero, Gregor Mendel. This brave scientist introduced us to his laws of heredity and showed us how the traits of ancestors don't blend together like paint, but rather like a deck of cards. Each trait retains its identity and expresses itself uniquely. With the arrival of Mendel, all the pieces of the puzzle began to fit together. His laws became widespread and accepted, forever changing our understanding of genetic inheritance. Number 2. The Steady State Theory According to Fred Hoyle Steady State versus the Legendary Big Bang In one corner, the Steady State Theory is valiantly defended by the brilliant scientist Fred Hoyle. In the other, the Big Bang Theory, an explosive proposal that promised to shake the foundations of our understanding of the cosmos. The Steady State boldly claimed that the universe was eternal and constant, an unchanging entity that was never born and would never die. However, scientific data showing that the universe was expanding endlessly challenged this theory. It desperately needed a mysterious source that would generate matter to maintain its infinite density. In the midst of this crossroads, an alternative theory emerged. The Big Bang. This bold idea proposes that the universe was born in a single massive explosion and has been expanding ever since. Fred Hoyle, confronted with this threatening prospect, scornfully called it the Big Bang and rejected it out of hand, clinging tenaciously to his steady state theory. As time went on, however, the scientific community began to lean more and more towards the Big Bang theory. The evidence was mounting, the mysteries were unraveling, and the new idea was gaining ground. Nevertheless, Hoyle remained steadfast in his position. Some scientists continue to search for evidence to support his retro-cheek theory. After all, who doesn't love a good scientific challenge? Number 1. The Cosmological Constant According to Albert Einstein When we said at the beginning of this video that even the best scribe makes a blur, we meant it. Albert Einstein is undoubtedly one of the most brilliant minds in history, and even he made mistakes. His equations describing the general theory of relativity and the workings of gravity were seriously flawed. Among the terms he used was the cosmological constant, which he introduced because he thought that the universe was static and with which he counteracted the force of gravity. Later, when scientists suggested that the universe was not static but was actually expanding, Einstein eliminated this cosmological constant from his equations. And Einstein was wrong. After his death, New advances suggested that not only is the universe expanding, but that the expansion is accelerating with time. 
To explain why this is happening, scientists reintroduced the cosmological constant into the equations of general relativity. Amazing, isn't it? You know that not everything is perfect, much less in the hands of those who have the constant responsibility to be perfect in their creations. And that's it, Ed lovers. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. See you in an upcoming video.